Hey everybody, Logan Kirk here with RockyMountainMysticMan.com. In today's video, I'm going to be going over a very basic primer about what to do during an SHTF situation when you need to track a human being. So if you want to learn this very much needed skill, come on, let's go get to it. During an SHTF situation, you may find yourself having to go after another person who has become lost or worse, is stolen from you, or acted with an aggression that warrants their capture or execution. Now, this is when the skill of tracking becomes necessary. Tracking a human being, it is the most difficult of quarters to track. Knowing how to track an animal, okay, now that's something that you should probably understand before undertaking the education of tracking a human. And the reason is that the concepts involved they're both very similar to each other, but when you're dealing with a human being, you have to realize that they are the much smarter quarry, and they will absolutely attempt to use all manners of deception to throw you off their trail. So before you begin tracking a person or a group of people, it's important to make sure that you have the essential gear and supplies that you will need to be successful at the ready. This means water, food, survival equipment, a small notepad, a pencil, and a tape measure of some sort. Now, I prefer to use sewing tape because it folds up in the haversack, takes up little to no space. You also have to realize that tracking can almost always be time and energy intensive. You don't want to be caught out in the bush, all right, tracking a potentially dangerous person without the proper supplies and training at hand. You need to attempt to track, okay, as silently as possible. You gotta remain undetected. And you should also try and pay special attention to using camouflage that's appropriate for the environment that you are going to be tracking in. Now, tracking, it also requires a very intense concentration on your part, as well as a whole bucket load of stamina and situational awareness. So before you set out to track another human being, make sure that you are feeling very alert, you're hydrated, and have eaten. Now, a paper and a tablet and pen to record notes and make observations is essential to being successful in almost all tracking situations. You will be recording the date and time, any weather observations, distances, lengths, angles, as well as creating drawings of the tracks and other signs that you come across. If a map of the area is available, you should absolutely take it with you, and it should be one that you don't mind riding on okay, to record any tracking details. It is also a really good idea to bring along a cell phone with a good camera for taking pictures of the sign that you come across to aid in the mission. So before leaving to track, and if at all possible, you need to check the current weather conditions, the weather history, and the weather forecast, because being caught out in bad weather, it's gonna force you to severely hasten your search, and also it can destroy the sign that's being left behind by your quarry. So getting a record of the prior week's weather, all right, it's gonna help aid you in understanding the conditions of the possible tracks and signs that you are gonna find. If you're tracking in a place that you're not familiar with, then you should absolutely try and take a local person with you, okay? Because they have the familiarity that you just don't have with the environment. I mean, look, even an experienced tracker can face problems when they are tracking in an area that is foreign to them. The locals are just going to be more familiar with the local vegetation, the weather conditions, and just the overall environment that you're tracking in. And so it's really easy to see how this is going to be a huge boon in the tracking of your quarry. Now this is important, so listen up. When tracking a human being, you need to be as silent as absolutely possible. This is not only going to protect you from the dangers of a possible ambush, but it's also going to let you hear the noises that your quarry may make while fleeing. And if you're lucky enough to be working in a group, all right, predetermined hand signals should absolutely be used to communicate with each other. You must also learn about the potential tracks and signs that your target may be leaving behind. These include things like their shoe size and type, as well as any other information about the target that you can get a hold of, such as their height and weight, uh, what they're possibly carrying with them. Because these things, they can and they're going to assist you when any sign that your target leaves behind is found, or if it begins to lack in abundance or even disappear altogether. So if you can, you gotta try to determine the known capabilities of your quarry, such as their motives, uh, their skill set, their traits, their habits, and their possible tactics, and even their mindset. Okay, because having this type of information on hand is gonna give you that much needed tactical edge when you're tracking, especially if you're tracking a hostile quarry. Now, studying the environment you'll be tracking in is also very important to being successful in your hunt. You should also try to educate yourself about the type of wildlife that is living in the area that you're gonna be tracking in. This can actually provide you with some very important additional indications to your target's location within the environment. 
paying attention to any potential environmental dangers as well as where the sources of food and water are and just as important is recognizing potential areas for being ambushed always be ready for an ambush or traps or traps that have been set by your quarry now like i said in the beginning you need to carry a notebook with you to record your observations all right this these observations are in addition to the record of the sign and the environmental conditions you're already keeping so you should be keeping notes on the tactics as well that the target has deployed to throw you off their track as well as any you know pattern of recognized behavior that they're displaying while on the run when recording your observations, you need to record everything you find, including the date, the time, the weather conditions, and the condition of the sign that you come across. All right? So begin tracking by looking for potential sign in easy terrain, such as softened ground and muddy areas. Locations where sign is gonna be the easiest to identify, but if no sign is found in these easy areas, then you gotta methodically move to the more difficult terrain. So once sign is established, then you begin to move from sign to sign, making notes of each sign you find in your notes. It also helps at this point you can take pictures of the sign. So tracking a human requires that you notice what is out of context with the surrounding environment. You gotta practice having exceptional situational awareness. And it's best to look first for the obvious signs, such as footprints and leaves and plants that have been broken, bent, or turned, so that the light underside contrasts with the surrounding environment. So if you find a shoe print, I just draw it in my notes. I, I take note of any irregularities in the print that make it unique or any other notable signs that are going to help distinguish that target from other human beings. And I've also found that unless the footprint is really clear that a drawing, okay, it's going to be way better than a photograph, but still take a photo if you have a camera with you. Now, if you're tracking in or across a grassy area, the direction that the grass is bent, okay, that is gonna show you the direction that the quarry was moving. And you also need to take note of the quarry's walking pattern. Okay, so it's helpful also to remember that women, okay, they're gonna typically take smaller steps, but so do men who are carrying a heavy load. So a quarry that is running is also gonna leave more space between their tracks, and this is gonna distort their track, sometimes leaving just the disturbance from the toe of their shoes. And in most cases, uh, where they are running, the toe will also appear to be deeper, and it's not gonna leave a heel or imprint behind. And if a target is sprinting, well, that force of their, can, of their steps often destroys that track completely. So in these cases, I look at the lines of, deter, um, of disturbance to determine the direction the track target is going. So when you're hotly pursuing a person who is hastily moving, you need to also look for soil scatter. Soil and other debris can be thrown out of the tracks by the target when kicking the ground, or soil that is stuck to the sole of the quarry's foot is moved along with them, right? So soil scatter is typically located in front of the track and in line with the direction of travel. And this effect is especially pronounced in the looser type of ground, such as light dirt, sandy areas, and snow. Ugh. You also gotta keep an eye out for rocks that have been overturned, all right? So the exposed side of an overturned rock will be a lot of times, you know, darker, and you might also see an impression in the ground right where it was roosted before becoming dislodged. So you gotta take the time to consider the time of day, humidity, and the, and the temperature to attempt and determine how long that rock may have been overturned before you found it. You want to also look for disturbed grass and bent blades, okay, which can indicate the direction of travel of your quarry. So don't forget to look for any sign that is obviously unique to your situation. A good example of this would be like if the quarry has been shot or injured, you should be actively looking for blood sign. Paying attention to any animals and animal signs you track is also important, okay? Because many animals and even insects, they will avoid humans and they'll scurry off to shelter when a human approaches. So you gotta pay attention to absence of animal life in the area, such as bird song and things like that. Remember, they're typically gonna flee from a fast moving, hoof, fast moving human, and typically they're gonna go downwind if possible. So you gotta listen for the animals huffing, snorting, or running, and take note of their direction of travel. Something in the opposite direction in which they are running that may have spooked them. When you are tracking a human being, you have got to stay alert and focused. You have to maintain situational awareness. Remember to keep your head up slightly and look 15 or so yards ahead of you because this is going to enable you to continue to locate sign while still remaining alert for a potential ambush. 
You gotta remember that a person being tracked may try and set a trap to stop or slow down his trackers, because you better believe if I'm being tracked by a hostile, I am going to be aggressively mounting a counter tracking scheme if I can't confidently get away from those trackers. When a track is found, using the method of side heading can help you when viewing track details. Now, side heading is turning your head sideways, okay? And you get low to the ground to provide a better view of the track. And with your head in position like this, your bottom eye, it has the ability to scan the ground about eight to 12 inches out, while the top eyes can read up to three or four feet away. And ridges and shadows in that sign, they can become much more visible using the side heading method. So there are a lot of instances where people will track and behave very differently than animals. And you've got to be able to identify these differences in behavior and movement. For instance, okay, people will differ from animals when they're resting, all right? And they tend to prop their feet up when they sit, all right? People also tend to be really sloppy eaters. So look for signs not only of discarded food, but food, evidence that signs that food has maybe been taken from the environment like for instance like if you see a bunch of missing fruit that's been pulled down and chewed on from the trees or edible plants that have been utilized people also tend to climb over things then go under or around them like animals do so look for evidence where shoes have you know rubbed against things when crossed watch for rubs where the target may have scuffed tree bark or scraped mud off of their shoes because people do that kind of crap and remember that since shoes pick up material from the ground, look for the transfer of trace soil on other objects such as rocks and tree stumps. You need to also be aware that people tend to leave a lot of trash, right? Okay, so look for discarded ration packages, food tins, cigarette butts, and possibly even dropped documents or supplies. Obviously, people also carry things, you know, animals don't. So look for compression signs from objects laid down by the targets, such as the impression of tools or rifle butts, clubs, crutches, and their backpacks. You need to realize that your hostile quarry may also attempt to trick you and throw you off their track. For instance, they may do things like walk in reverse or even tie their shoes on backwards. So try not to rely on which direction of the tracks that they're pointing, but also you gotta read the sign within the track to determine the, the quarry's direction of travel. All right, so you can also check which part of the track is deepest to determine direction of travel. And since like walking backwards, that's not natural, be alert for soil scatter that that person may drag out of their track when stepping. Now targets may also change their shoes or purposely alter their gait. Now these tricks will make tracking more difficult, but not impossible. So if you think that they have, may have changed their shoes, that's when you refer to your measurements of the target's stride and you track them by their gait and their walking pattern. So in regards to having them, you know, having them have a suddenly altered gait, you gotta look for signs that the gait is unnatural. Things like unusually deep heel marks. That's gonna indicate that the target is taking unnaturally longer strides. And always be aware that if the target knows they are being attracted, they may attempt an ambush. I know I will. So a target will often begin attempting to disguise their tracks right before they attempt an ambush or when they want to bed down to rest or even change the direction of travel. So if you lose the sign altogether, then you need to move back to the last known sign. You got to confirm that last positive sign and you mark it. Then you look about 25, 30 yards ahead and you sweep your eyes from the center to the left and then sweep back to center. And you do the same for the right side. And each time you sweep, you pause during that sweep to bring your attention back towards your feet in an attempt to relocate the next sign. So if you don't locate the next sign, then you need to deploy the 360 degree search method. So the 360 degree sweep method it's a very intensive search pattern and it requires you to make ever increasing circles from the last sign found outward until the next sign is found. Now this method, it sucks you guys, it's labor intensive and it can end up requiring a circle of a mile or more in worst case scenarios before the track is successfully picked up again. So it's one of those things, you just gotta do it sometimes. So if you're tracking more than one person, it's important to try and 
figure out approximately how many people you might be tracking. So to attempt to determine this, you just kind of step off one pace next to the tracks. And you lay out a space about you know, 18, 20 inches wide across the tracks. And inside this approximately 18 by 36 inch box, you count the number of full and partial tracks. You divide that by two to determine an estimated number of the amount of people that you're tracking. But you gotta be aware that multiple people fleeing together are obviously going to work and try to work together to avoid detection. They may do things like split up or they may travel together, in which case you should expect that they're also gonna double their efforts to throw you off the trail or ambush you. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick primer on tracking humans. And if you haven't already, then like, share, and doggone it, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more of the mountain man life, skills, and gear reviews. And you know what I'm going to say now. I'll see you soon.